Um, so this season has been particularly traumatic for your character especially. Uh, was there any particular scene that you found most difficult emotionally? Uh, yeah, returning to the ship and realizing the full effect and consequence of what's basically Slatter's responsibility for leaving. Uh, it's the death of Cruz and uh, Mason and a couple of other characters. Um, that's always uh, hard to portray so that it beca doesn't become too melodramatic. You want to keep it as real as possible. What would it be like if I really lost you know, a son or a daughter or a colleague? And, um, you got to think of something sad without being sappy. How do you think? Uh, how do you think Mike would get along with all the other military characters he played, whether it was Independence Day or even how Jordan and Justice? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Slatter is a stand-up guy. He'll uh, he'll get along with anybody who's honest and uh, courageous, forthright, uh, hard worker. Doesn't suffer fools easily. Well, that becomes a very big focus of the so, next few episodes. They're all kind of friendly inside me. Hopefully, they'll be friendly outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, oh, they're all mine. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, I mean, your character does have a, a level of responsibility that's um, kind of hard to portray on screen. Um, but in doing so, it has many facets to the personality itself. Um, are there any personality traits of your character that you wish you could kind of embody in yourself? Or is it something that you're just drawing from yourself and putting into the character? I try to borrow from those, for this character, I try to borrow from those that I've witnessed in person. Some of the officers and even some of the enlisted uh, men and women try to just be diligent and honorable as they are. Again, I said in the panel earlier, I don't know if you were there in the panel, uh, what's amazing to me about the Navy especially is that you have these gigantic war machines that, I'm so glad are on our side, run by <laughs> 19 to 22 year olds. That's the main, uh, that's the majority of those running these ships and are in charge and they have critical roles. And, uh, I'm just a humble actor. I look at these guys and they've, they've sacrificed, you know, they put their lives on the line to, to go do what they do so that we can come and play at it. And that's, that's just an amazing, amazingly humble feeling. And last question. What is your favorite thing about being on the last show? <laughs> it's, it's a combination of many things. My favorite thing would be the relationship that we have with the cast and crew and the synergy we have with the Navy and how much the United States Navy has signed on to allow us to be in their world and be a part of their world. That's it's great. There's nothing like standing on the bridge of a guided missile destroyer <laughs> at speed with the five inch gun firing <laughs> off to the horizon and it's hitting a tight little grouping of a target twelve miles out. So it's, it's pretty great. And and to have them matter of factly you know, all ahead, flank, left, roger that, I sir, captain. And the way they just are so trained and disciplined and for us to witness that up close and personal is uh, really an honor of a lifetime. So, with it being now in the third season, um, how did you guys decide to go in such a different direction and kind of go to Asia, uh, which you know, is kind of a controversial topic for the So that's kind of a decision. Yeah. Okay. Um, truthfully, the decision to go to Asia was predicated more on where would it be fun to take the ship? Okay. Uh, where haven't we been? We started at the North Pole almost. We went down across Europe, South Central America, North America, Mississippi River. It's a big world, and we wanted to choose some place that might have an interesting location, and interesting characters, and possible different villains. And so it really stemmed from the fun part of storytelling, which is, you know, where do you want to go? The political stuff 
was back burner for us. You know, uh, as I said in the panel, a lot of times politics and real life catches up to what you're doing, even if you didn't intend it. But for us, it was more about just where would it be fun to go. And as I look to season four, it's the same thing. I think where would it be fun? You know, and then after that, you go into the what if this, what if that, and you start telling your story. I understand we're about to see your directorial debut. What was that experience like, and, and would you do it again? Uh, yeah, I directed this coming up episode, episode seven. Uh, it was the greatest experience for me. It was a lot of fun. First of all, I had great help because I had my personal cast and crew and people I've worked with since 2012, and so it's a great level of trust I had for them to get me through the process. And uh, it was great for me to experience firsthand, not just visiting the set or hearing about it, what the crew goes through on a daily basis to make this show happen. So that when I ask them to do things in the future, I know what I'm asking them to do. It's sort of like going into battle with your troops without any of the risk factors that go along with that. It's a, it's a weak metaphor, considering, but it's the same idea. If you walk a mile in their shoes, you kind of know what you're asking them to do. And also creatively, it was just very fulfilling because I spent a lot of time in the writer's room playing the parts and picking up the ideas and then we, we put them in the scripts and then we talk about what we want and then someone else executes it. And this is a chance for me to do kind of a part of the job to a certain degree and still rely on the great artists we have working with us. So I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it again if I can. It's all a question of how much time I have. If my writer's room is cranking out stories, I'll, I'll have more time. If we get bogged down, I'll have less time. But I hope you like it. <laughs> Regarding the women, okay. uh, watching the show every week, it's, it's basically like watching like a one-hour movie. It's, it's that huge. Um, do you feel like it's hard to keep up uh, production-wise with you know that high level of quality week to week, as opposed to you know like on a feature film basis? Yeah, this is a very challenging show to make. We we put everything into each episode. Each episode. Uh, it begins with an idea, and we go, can we pull that off? And then, it has, then we have scripts, and then we hand it to production, and they say, okay, uh, uh, okay. But they, they never say, we can't do it. They just say, let's try to do it. And then that's where the communication comes in, because we're very flexible in the writing staff. If there's a real problem, you can find a creative solution. So rather than coming back and saying, we couldn't find you a pirate haven like, that looks like this, we found you something like this, instead of giving up, they give you alternatives. And then I go, I can work with that. And then I rewrite the script. You guys know when you rewrite scripts, they, we change the color of the pages and so, so that um, you know what a new page is coming from. So we go from white to blue to yellow, pink, salmon, and every show does it differently, golden rod. And then if you go back to white again, after you go through all that, you go to double white. And that means you've done a lot of revisions. We're always in the doubles. <laughs> because we're always revising, not because the story's not working, but because it's a hard show to make. And we feel this pressure to keep that level of action, summer movie, big budget, you know, aesthetic every week. And so far, it's sort of like, it's sort of like running down a hill as you're falling down the hill. And to get to the bottom, if you're still standing, then you meant it on purpose. That's, that's how it feels. But it's a great experience. It's a, it's a 13 month for 13 episodes job. You know, it isn't like you can crank it out fast. There's a lot of visual effects, a lot of, you know, a lot of work that goes into it. We have an amazingly dedicated crew. Uh, thanks for doing the show. Sure. It's great. Um, I, I can assume that it, it kind of took a while to get the show on TV. I'm sure it did. Um, and things have, things have changed. Um, has the current, let's just say, the election, <laughs> Has it changed the way that the writing uh, room works? You know, because things could get worse in the real world. Oh, <laughs> you know, like yeah. you know, if you were to kind of uh, how how much of the sensibilities of the current situation are manifested into what you're doing in the writing? I think we, we start off with what works with our story, and we live in our little bubble. What what makes sense for this world we've created, and if we follow those rules, the audience feels there's a sort of holistic quality to it, it makes sense. And if someone acts a certain way that's different from what the show is, everyone feels it. That applies, by, by the way, to even a, a cop show or a law show. They have their world and they have their rules of, of behaving. If someone does something that's out of character, you feel it. So we deal with our stories. We obviously all live in the world, and so when Ebola hit and we saw the way people were reacting, we were remarking, oh, that's kind of how our characters were reacting, or that's an interesting insight, maybe we can bring that in. So it creeps into our storytelling, but mostly 
we bring to it our own life experience as it is to say, you know, what if this happened, what if that happened. I was really afraid of viruses. For some reason, something you can't see that makes you sick. Cooties. Yeah. <laughs> and so I called up some virologists and, you know, and uh, we said, hey, we have this idea, like this virus is kind of buried in the permafrost, but the earth warms, it gets released, picked up by migrating birds, and zoonotically jumps to a human being. What do you think? And they go, yeah, that's kind of our worst nightmare. <laughs> and so I knew we had an idea for a show there. So it's, it really comes from within as opposed to from without. You know, the world's going to be the world, and if you try to react to it or try to guess it, you're just going to end up chasing it. You know, which is not what we're interested in doing. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, most writers, when starting a show these days, say yes, we know exactly how it ends. We already right. have this all mapped out. Do you know where it all ends? No. No, we, we don't because we don't want to write towards it. We want to keep going. If they, if they call me tomorrow and said. This is it. You've got X number of episodes, and you're done. Whether it's one season, two seasons, then I can start mapping. But even then, you want to keep it organic and free because you never know what you discover as you're writing. So we write ourselves into a corner every week and figure out how to get out of it. And that's the fun. Thanks for the honesty. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. It's been a pretty interesting season for you so far. Yeah. Can you give any hints about what's coming up? Um. Might get killed if I do that. No. Um, I um. I find the show just seems to get like more intense and more high stakes each episode. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, thank you. I'm endlessly impressed with what um, the crew manages to do in nine days. The quality of the show. The um, I mean, it's like a summer blockbuster movie every week. Um, I I find that I, I'm so impressed. Each episode, as we keep moving towards the season finale, it just keeps getting more and more intense. Um, one of my favorite things about the show is Hiro's character, Takahaya, and his wife, Kyoko, who um, are, are now on board the ship. And the show raises the question of, you know, it poses the question of, is this villain really a villain? You know, it's not so black and white. You feel for the guy. You understand where he's coming from. And Sasha, in particular, um, because she speaks Japanese, um, develops a relationship with his wife and um, uh, and understands where they're coming from. I find that really interesting. It's not just like a big bad villain up in a tower. You know, there he's, he's with us, and uh, that really comes to a head in, in, throughout the course of uh, the season. Yeah. Does, does are you suggesting that Sasha sort of not necessarily sides with them, but finds the finds empathy in their, not just Sasha in I mean, their situation? Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, if you remember, she's um, pregnant um, and not well. So um, there's a human. A I mean, that's my favorite thing about the show is the human aspects of um, you know this real humanity in these characters because they're not. These aren't people to run away from danger. All the characters on this show. Are gonna run towards it. They're gonna they're gonna fight. And so in those rare moments of humanity, and they're not often on the show, but when they are, my God, they're so powerful. Um, they they really ring true because these aren't characters that sit and talk about their feelings and emotions and oh that made me feel sad when you you know that's not what they, this show does you know so. Um, I, I personally really enjoy those. I mean, just as much as I enjoy the action and the um, high intensity of the show. But um, yes, We're, we, have, we grow to understand where those characters are coming from, which I think is really great writing. Um, Sasha has been a like, mysterious character um, with her background and her current situation. Mm -hmm. Is there a side of her that we haven't seen that's going to come out? I actually didn't find her that mysterious when I joined. I found that the fans' response to it really fascinating because um, I, I, I found her to be really straightforward. Um, but I understand where they're coming from. This is a violent 
a scary world where people aren't who they say they are. Um, so, I, I mean, I understand where the fans are coming from, but um, I, I personally believe that everything Sasha does um, is in line with the values of the crew of the J Nathan James. Uh, touching on what you said about your character being a little mysterious, uh, obviously there's something going on there with her and the captain. Are we going to uh, find we out? See uh, <laughs> I, I still have to call him the captain. I know. I still have to call him the captain, too, sometimes. Um, so, Sasha and Tom have a lot of similarities, in a way. Um, you know, he calls her stubborn. She calls him stubborn. You know, they um, they also have... She still thinks of him not as the CNO, not as the captain. She remembers him before he was all these things. So she sometimes talks to him out of turn and not in the manner that she should on board the ship. But um, I like that about her. She's opinionated and, and doesn't hide it. Uh, I find that appealing. Because she's smart. She's skilled. She knows what she's talking about. She's the expert in this region. So, um... Yes, their past is, I find, very interesting because she has the ability to awaken something in him that has been dormant for a long time. Um, and at least from my perspective, it's been very interesting to put these characters in a room together who haven't seen each other in this long and discover that there may still be some feelings there. I mean, they're both, they have a lot, they're both widowed, you know? This isn't their ideal situation, you know? But somehow they're back together again. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, people are just, we're all just trying to do our best and uh, survive. And for some reason, he's back in Sasha's life and he's in hers, so uh, we'll see where it goes. That all stops once the blood starts coming out the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> but it sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How tough has this been physically for you? I mean, you're used to action, but yeah. how tough has this been? Um, you know, with other shows that I've done, there's been more freedom to do things how I want it because, and I, it's more of a character choice. Like when I played um, Dottie on Agent Carter, I watched a lot of um, Scarlett Johansson and her stunt double Heidi Moneymaker's work because I wanted there to be some connection between the two and their movement is very fluid, a lot of spins, a lot of um, reach and all that. So I, that was the only thing I felt like I needed to get right on Agent Carter, but at the same time I felt like I could do things how I wanted to. Whereas on this show, I want to get it right. We have actual seals on set with us. And there is a right way and a wrong way to do a lot of this. There's still a lot of, you know, some people like, you know, one military advisor might tell me that my, the, the, the gun needs to be here. Another one will tell me it needs to be here. So there is some personal preference in it all. But overall, there is um, very formalized training, and um, I certainly want to get it right. Have you gotten actual reaction from? Real military personnel about it. Well, plenty on set, you know, we've had. We've but I mean, like, from, from viewers uh, who are saying, oh, well, you guys really nail it? Or, like, um, no. I know that, I know that everyone, you know, will have their opinion about the show, but I haven't seen, I haven't seen much of it, but I, um, you know, in some ways, Sasha's kind of similar to Tex in, in the manner that she's not in a uniform. She's not. She's former naval intelligence, and she's um, she is. She does kind of go to the beat on drum, but at the same time, um, she's willing to fall in line with the crew and go um, on you know in, in formation with them. But uh, I would love to get some feedback. I hope we're doing the crowd. Yeah.